Hello everybody, Kelvin here, aka WizKid, and today's video is all about getting CCP, or in other words, Cisco Configurational Professional, up and running. So, the reason I want to do this video is because I'm studying for the CCNA security exam, and for those that are also studying for that exam, you will you would have realised that there's quite a lot of reference made to CCP. So, what I wanted to do is I actually wanted to show you guys how we could actually install um, and use CCP um, so that we're very familiar with it when it comes to sitting the exam. So in front of you here we have a Windows 7 virtual machine, um, a, a box standard dumb switch and a Cisco CSR 1000V. Now first of all you need to download um, the CCP from the Cisco website. You will need a username and password in order to log in and download. Um, the CCP download is free so you should be able to download that and once you've downloaded it you'll be presented with a file like this here. So you go ahead and you extract that file and you will open that file and you'll be presented with two um, files here. So these files need to be um, sent to the device you are using so in my case the files will be sent to the CSR 1000V so that we can use CCP from the Windows 7 machine. Okay so this is what we're going to actually focus on doing today. So you'll need some sort of TFTP um, server so you can download um, software online for free. I have a TFTPD which you can see here. Um, at the moment I am using SolarWinds TFTP server which again is free. So uh, for, the fo for, well, for the main focus of this video today I'll be using the SolarWinds TFTP server. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by configuring the devices so what you'll need to do is you'll need to, this is all being done, I've done all this already, so um, the Windows 7 machine um, currently has an IP address, so if we just go to here, we'll just verify this, um, we'll go to status, and my IP address is 192.168.50.10. The CSR router is using, let me just get that back up, the CSI router, well it's not using anything at the moment so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through the configurations now for the um, CSR 1000V and get the files sent over to the router. So what we'll do is we'll just do a show run just to verify that there's no configurations on this router and as you can see everything is bog standard okay so what you're gonna do is we're gonna start by configuring the interface G1. and we'll give it an IP address of 192.168.50.254 slash 24 okay then we'll verify that by pinging the PC 50.10 and as you can see there that that's successful which is good so what we need to do now is we are going to create a uh, username so we'll do that now so username and I'll use which kid for this privilege 15 and what we're going to do is we'll do algorithm type script uh, secret then the password is going to be Cisco for simplicity okay then we'll do IP domain name and we'll do it as Cisco Dot com. Now what we're going to do is we'll generate RSA keys. But 
before we do that is prompting us that we need to create the host name we'll call our CSR 1000 V R1 and we'll generate the keys now 1024 key pair there we go that they've been generated so what we need to do now is we actually need to enable the HTTP server and the HTTP secure server so that we can actually access CCP um, via the um, web browser so we'll do IP HTTP server IP HTTP secure server okay and what we'll also do now is we'll do um, IP HTTP authentication and we'll do local now this command is important if you don't actually specify the local it won't allow you to log in so what I'll do in fact is I won't press enter on that I'll just delete that for now and we'll, we'll um, get the files sent over to the CSR uh, via TFTP um, then what we'll do is we'll try and attempt to log in using the browser and see what happens then we'll enter that command again so we're going to get the files now sent over and another thing that's probably worth mentioning is once you've downloaded the SolarWinds um, it'll be running like this um, you need to go to file configure and you'll see the default TFTP root uh, storage and this is where you need to you can either change this or you can uh, move those files these two files to that directory because that's where it's going to be pulled from I won't worry too much about these um, I've actually specified this but you can actually bind it to all the addresses on the machine and um, just for simplicity and I won't worry about any of the the others so once you've done that and you've moved it to the directory so this is the actual directory here where I've moved them to you will pull the files from there so we'll go ahead and we'll do that now so we'll do exit out of that and we'll do copy tftp um, let me just get on a separate line so you can see it flash and then we'll enter that and you do the um, remote host name so this will be the server 192.168.50.10 in my case then the source file name as I mentioned before so we'll flick back to this okay and I'll just make this a little bit smaller okay so we'll enter the top one first so it'll be CCP Express and I would do it case sensitive just to avoid any uh, mishaps. Uh, P Express that's security underscore en dot html and I believe there's a little bit more to that. Yep, yeah, there is dot gz so gz and I'll just bring this bit back up here so you can see what happens it actually logs it so you'll see it all happening um, and we'll go back on this so we'll enter on the source file name and we can leave the destination file name as that unless you want to change it then there's already a file existing there and that's from um, an earlier test I did so we'll confirm that so it's accessing now and you can see on the log on the left hand side that it's actually um, accessed it now and we've got the timestamp which is correct and started and completed which we can see here so that's that first file copied so now we're going to copy the second file 
So again, we can up arrow to copy TFTP flash the address, the, it'll stay the same. And we're going to change the uh, source file name now. So it'll be CCP Express Admin underscore three underscore one underscore two underscore en dot uh, if I enter on that we'll keep the same destination file name and again we'll just confirm and we can see that the logs have started again so we'll just wait until this one completes so now that the second file is done we now need to extract that so what we're going to do now is we're going to do the following command. And I'll just pull that file name up again so I can see it. Okay. CCP Express Admin underscore three underscore one underscore two underscore EN dot flash Now this will start extracting the second um, file that we have there, the CCP Express admin three underscore one underscore two en dot tar file. And once that file's extracted, we should be able to access the uh, CCP GUI uh, via the web browser. So we will give it a second and let this extract. It does take um, approximately up to five minutes to do this. So I'll pause the video now and I'll be back once this once it's all extracted. So once that has finished extracting, what we'll do now is we will access a web browser and we'll try access the CSR 1000 V via um, a web browser. So mine's already coming up here with the address. We'll continue with the certificate. And we're going to log in with the local username and password that we created earlier. So I will be this kid and um, password Cisco. And as you can see, there it's just prompt me for it again. Um, and that's the reason being is because we've not specified to use um, local for authentication. So what we're going to do is we'll do HTTP. Um, oops, sorry, IT, IP, HTTP, authentication, local. And what we'll do is we'll attempt to log back in again. The same credentials. And it should let us in. So if, uh, let me just verify actually those credentials are correct. So that's right. There we go. So this is just loading now. Um, it does take some time to load actually the first time round. I'm not sure if that's because I'm using um, a virtual environment or whether it's because it's it's being executed for the first time however what i'll do is i shall pause the video until it's loaded and then i shall resume so we can see that once ccp is loaded successfully um this is the gui that you'll get oh yeah then you can obviously begin to uh, do what you need to do 
in regards to uh, learning CCP. I hope you found this video useful. I will be, well, I plan on posting um, the steps on my blog as well, so look out for that. And the link will be in the description, but thanks for watching.